Hello everyone and welcome to today's Travel Webcast webinar, Rocky Mountaineer Overview and What's New for 2018. Presenting for us today is Heather Glasgow, Training and Development Specialist for Rocky Mountaineer. Hi Heather, how are you? Whoops, great, <laughs> great, thanks Dan. Great, thanks for being here today. Uh, so just before we get started, I'd just like to let the viewers know that if you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the Q&A box found in your Zoom toolbar and those questions will be answered during a Q&A session at the end. Okay, Heather, if you'd like to go ahead and share your screen, you can start whenever you're ready. Great, okay, so there we go. So Dan, can you just give me the thumbs up that you can see my glimpses of amazing opening slide here? Yep, I can see it and it looks great. Great, thank you. Uh, and thank you to all of our participants as well. It's fantastic to be invited here by Baxter to uh, get an opportunity to have your your undivided attention as we as we look at some Rocky Mountaineer detail here. So, as uh, Dan mentioned, my name is Heather, and and I work in uh, training and development for our sales organization here at Rocky Mountaineer headquarters in beautiful Vancouver. Um, I've been with Rocky Mountaineer for 11 years now, actually. Just last week celebrated my 11th uh, season with Rocky Mountaineer, which is kind of hard to believe. The time's really flown past. It's an exciting organization. Lots of changes each year to kind of keep, uh, keep us busy. Um, and I'm just fresh off of a, a learning journey experience as well, where I traveled with a group of 100 uh, travel agents on one of our, our learning journeys. You might know them as familiarization tours. Uh, we actually went up into Jasper, and, and this, this view that's on our slide is the Yellowhead Valley. That's Mount Robson rising in the distance there. And uh, this was actually the route that we took going into Jasper through through Kamloops. So at the end of our session, we'll have a, a question and answer period. And I should be well equipped to answer your questions. If I if I don't have the answers, then uh, we can gather those questions and, and um, Dan and I will work out how to get that information back to you. But um, but I should be able to answer those for you. So looking forward to to that section of our presentation today. Uh, so talking about our presentation today, we're going to be looking through a little bit about Rocky Mountaineer, so kind of an overview of our routes and our destinations. Uh, we'll look into a little bit about our demographic and, and you know, where you find Rocky Mountaineer guests. Uh, also, we have a really exciting year for 2018 coming up, um, 2017 just having concluded. So our last train day was yesterday. The train rolled into the station right on time. Um, our founder was there to wave it in. And, and that was kind of the last uh, of the 2017 season, hard to believe. Um, and now we're selling into 2018, of course. Uh, we'll also look at a little bit about selling Rocky Mountaineer and, and what tools we have to help you with that. Uh, and then, of course, our question period, as I mentioned. So um, we're actually using Zoom, not GoToWebinar, and Dan is, is managing that. But uh, if you want to submit your questions to him, he'll manage that as we go through. So if you think of something, drop it into the little question asking applet and, uh, and we won't lose it at the end of the session. So the first thing I want to talk about here is our 28-year-old uh, <laughs> recipe for success. Uh, we like to refer to this as our four S's. So, you know, on board the train, we really focus in these four areas to create that sort of life-changing experience that we offer at, at Rocky Mountaineer. So the first is, of course, the sweet and the savory. And this is a great uh, picture to be looking at for that. Uh, sweet and the savory refers to our culinary experience on board. So both of our levels of service silver leaf and gold leaf feature premier locally inspired uh, freshly prepared meals on board the train and um, we really do delight and surprise our guests who are kind of wondrous as how we as to how we we manage to kind of crank out these um, really elegantly prepared and displayed meals on the train so that's our sweet and uh, and savory section uh, whoops, going back for a second here. So uh, the other part is our service. And, and really, aside from the scenery, our onboard hosts are our greatest asset. They go through uh, what we like to refer to as kind of a Rocky Mountaineer University, where they spend over a month in, in training and uh, refresher training, uh, learning how to really bring the landscape to life through, through storytelling um, and, and really anticipating the needs of our guests on board. So when we look at our, our guest surveys and, and 
comments, a lot of what comes back is that those hosts were really outstanding and they really are world-class uh, service personnel. So they, they also help in that other fourth S, which is socialization. They help to sort of connect people from around the world and, uh, and really get them sort of chatting with one another and they, they're sort of a connective element. And then of course, last but certainly not least is uh, the scenery on board, really spectacular. Um, those mountains can make you feel like a marble, sort of. Uh, we, had a, we had an ad campaign once that talked about feeling like a marble rolling across the feet of giants. And uh, I have to say that I quite relate to, to that. It stands out in my mind. Um, and, and the pictures don't do it justice, I have to say. You really have to kind of sort of be in front of those mountains to, to take in their vastness and just the immense distance that the Canadian landscape offers. But you don't have to take it from me. Uh, we do have some fantastic awards and recognition in our history. Uh, Baxter Travel, of course, our media agent's uh, choice award is right there. We're the number one rail company, of course, of a very um, honored um, accolade. And, and some others there as well. So National Geographic, a very recognizable brand. Uh, Globe and Mail as well, which is a huge paper here in Canada. Um, so, so winning some travel awards there. So really, you know, impeccable onboard service, gourmet cuisine, luxurious surroundings. These are just a few reasons why Rocky Mountaineer Rail Journeys are really considered to be among the best in the world and the only way to see the Pacific Northwest and the Canadian Rockies. So one of the things that's really important to remember is that Rocky Mountaineer is an all daylight sightseeing adventure. So we don't sleep on board the trains and this is a huge distinction here. It's really what sets us apart from our other competitors in, in the rail industry is that uh, you know we, we are traveling only during the daylight and we sleep at comfortable hotels in the evening hours. So really making sure that our clients get, uh, get to sort of see all of the action from sunrise to sunset throughout the day. We also have four beautiful rail routes, which we'll talk about. They all have their own distinct highlights, um, and that's really what kind of makes up our, our catalog here. So a little bit about our demographics. Uh, we do have guests mostly ranging in, so the median age on board is about uh, 63 years old or 62.4 years old. Uh, most of them are married as well, so 82% married, which means that they're traveling in couples largely or uh, multiple couples traveling together. And they're also retired as well, so most of them, you know, over half of them are, are retired. This really aligns with uh, with the river cruise market. So really, our our guests align perfectly well with the river cruise market. Uh, we find that over seventy percent of river cruisers find a Rocky Mountaineer journey appealing, and uh, sixty percent of river cruisers say they're likely to take a Rocky Mountaineer journey in the future almost 80% of that number uh, saying that it's gonna be in the next two years. So river cruise clients are typically um, looking at Rocky Mountaineer and really, you know, river cruising and ocean cruising is often what we would consider a Rocky Mountaineer competitor more than, more than other rail services to be, to be fair. So this is our, our offering of rail routes. So we have, of course, four routes to choose from. Um, this is our new branded map too. It looks really beautiful. I'm sure Amy is very, very proud, Amy and our, our marketing team. So um, we're gonna take a look at, at each one of these, but I wanted to, to give you an opportunity to see how they're all knit together. Uh, so we're gonna talk about them individually, but keeping in mind that you can actually sort of combine um, two or more rail routes to create round trips or circle journeys uh, using our, our service. Services. So the first one we're going to talk about is really a quintessential Rocky Mountaineer rail passage and this is first passage to the west. Um, I am going to refer to them all from an eastbound perspective, so starting in Vancouver, finishing in the Rockies, but I do want to point out that they do operate in both directions. So you could actually turn that around and, and head into uh, Vancouver as well. So either eastbound or westbound, but today we're going to look at them from an eastbound perspective. So First Passage to the West is really quite aptly named. This is um, the part of the ribbon of steel that was laid down through Canada in the late 1880s. It was part of a promise made by our first Prime Minister. His name was John A. Macdonald and, uh, and he promised 
British Columbians um, a rail, well, he promised all Canadians uh, a rail line that would join the country from coast to coast. So this was a way of, of enticing them to join his vision of Canada and, and uh, join Confederation. So the rail line was promised that would run from Halifax all the way through to Vancouver, really knitting the country together. And so we all signed up and uh, construction started. It was finished in November of 1888 in a little place called Kregalaki, which is a very historic destination. And we do pass through there on, on this rail route. So lots of historical references. If we're starting on an eastbound journey, we would begin in Vancouver at about 7.30 in the morning. That's when we do our big all aboard call at our private uh, station in, in Vancouver. And uh, we get everybody on board the train. Breakfast is our first priority. We have sort of a toast, some safety announcements. We welcome everybody and then we're rolling by about 8 a.m. Um, we roll out of, the, out of the sort of cityscape of Vancouver and right into uh, the sort of Fraser Valley region, which is a rich and fertile greenland this is where most of our produce is coming from uh, feeding into into vancouver from the fraser valley we follow along the fraser river into the canyon which is kind of in the you know getting closer to kamloops in the middle of the province there and it's really a dry desert like region um, so we have high trestle bridges the train tracks follow uh, the river and we see mostly kind of dry canyon walls rock slide areas uh, we see lots of eagles and osprey fishing out of the out of the river there lots of sagebrush, hot temperatures, some really phenomenal railway scenery such as Cisco Crossing, so a place where two massive uh, rail bridges kind of cross each other. And we also see Hell's Gate, which is the narrowest segment of the Fraser River, so a big highlight there. We roll up into Kamloops at about 5.30 in the evening, 5.30, 6.30, somewhere in there. And uh, we have all of our guests staying at a hotel in Kamloops. Now, I should mention that Kamloops is a small town in, in central British Columbia. So it's quite uh, modest in, in its uh, accommodation offerings, but they're all, there are many rooms there in Kamloops to accommodate our guests. So they're all clean, comfortable, you know, centrally located, can offer a great meal and a nice night stay. Um, but they are, you know, moderate hotels in, in the two and a half, three star range. From Kamloops, we're up bright and early, you know, 6.30 in the morning or so, traveling uh, from Kamloops into Banff. And this is where we start to really uh, gain elevation. So outside of Kamloops, again, we have that desert-like scenery, uh, heading on to the Shushwap Lake chain, which is the fourth largest lake in British Columbia, boasting uh, 1,000 kilometers of, of pristine shoreline. From there, we head into, um, you know, start to start to see the sort of Monashi Mountains. We start to feel the train climbing in elevation as we approach the Continental Divide, uh, which is, you know, of course, the mountain ridge that separates British Columbia and Alberta. Uh, the lakes turn, the lakes and waterways turn alpine in their appearance. So, you know, really blue and kind of milky in color. And those mountain peaks with snow caps start to emerge. Uh, on this day, we're also going to see the spiral tunnels, which is a huge feat of railway engineering completed in the early 1900s. Uh, we also pass through the town of Field. We get to see the Kicking Horse River and of course the Continental Divide itself, which is a really fantastic natural phenomena. On this route, guests can choose to arrive into either Lake Louise or Banff, so one, one or the other. And that's our first passage to the west. So that's two full days on the train departing in the early morning, arriving in the evening hours with one night in, in Kamloops in the middle. Again, very historic rail rate, very quintessential Rocky Mountaineer. Next up, we have Journey Through the Clouds. So this route, again, starts in Vancouver, same sort of day from Vancouver into Kamloops that I just described. And then from Kamloops, we're going to fork up north into Jasper. And uh, this is actually following along Canadian National Rail Tracks. Canadian National was a competing organization to the first rail line that I described, which was actually called Canadian Pacific Rail. And uh, these guys came through about 30 years later. So railway technology by the time Canadian National arrived had changed a little bit and it wasn't necessary to have as many subdivisions along the rail route. So the train, which was no longer a steam engine, didn't have to stop as, at as many towns to refill with water. So this route is a little bit shorter in terms of the length of the day. So guests arriving a little earlier in the evening. 
into Jasper and, uh, and also much more remote as well. So not as many sort of towns and cities along its length. It, it does travel through a very remote passage. Uh, distinctive highlights include Little Hell's Gate, so a, a little narrowing of the Fraser River again, not quite as big as it was on the first day, but uh, definitely dramatic. We also see Pyramid Falls, which is a big 300 foot waterfall. And the Rocky Mountaineer passes so closely to the spray zone that if you happen to be on the outdoor vestibule there in Gold Leaf, you know, you can feel the kind of spray on your visage. It's a, a really phenomenal experience. And we slow the train right down so everybody gets a good look. Um, and then also, you know, really distinctive is the Yellowhead Valley. So we pass through kind of a valley area, which is actually was on the first slide. Um, so we see Mount Robson again, the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies at nearly 13,000 feet in elevation. And, um, and we pass through a little valley area there where you can see how the mountains, lakes, you know, waterways are sort of knit together. Also, guests on this route end up in Jasper. So this means that they're going to be, you know, a little bit longer because they're further away from an airport. So anybody going into Jasper, you know, it's going to take about a week long vacation overall, most likely. But, uh, but it's a beautiful remote little sleepy mountain town. Um, truly fantastic and, and unique. So next up we have our Rainforest Gold Rush route. Uh, this is one of the, the later routes that Rocky Mountaineer acquired. We introduced this one into the family in 2006. I, I remember distinctly because that was the year I actually started with, with Rocky Mountaineer. Uh, this is the road less traveled as well. It's a very special train. It takes a little bit longer. You know, we're looking at three days here on board instead of just two. So we start off in, in Vancouver in um, North Van actually. So uh, not our Rocky Mountaineer station that's just outside of downtown, but rather a platform in North Vancouver. So a little bit of a special departure there. And from there, we travel just three and a half hours into Whistler. And, and this goes right through the rainforest and coastal mountains. Very lush, very green, uh, very unique rainforest scenery. We travel through the Chicamoose Canyon, which is probably one of my favorite sites on all of our train routes that we offer. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, we arrive into Whistler at about noon, so we have lots of time for our guests to really explore around Whistler Village. As you know, it's a mecca of, uh, of outdoor activities. There's just a ton of things to do in terms of, um, you know, traipsing through, through the woods, <laughs> lots of trail walking, zip lining, uh, bear viewing tours, ATVing, all kinds of stuff that our guests can can get up to. It's also quite cosmopolitan for a mountain town as well. So there's some great dining and shopping all available within a short uh, walking distance from their accommodations. From Whistler, we have a pretty pretty full day headed out into Quinell, and, and this is really through some of that really remote uh, scenery. We see lots of desert-like sites again, so traveling through that dry canyon area. Uh, and then as we wind into Quinell, we're looking at more of a, a sort of um, a marshland, so populated by moose, uh, great opportunities for wildlife viewing through there, and also following the history of the Gold Rush Trail. So the California Gold Rush kind of moved up here into British Columbia and, and sort of settled in an area just northeast of Quinell called Barkerville. So along the way there, we see lots of like shout outs to the Gold Rush history, such as abandoned mining equipment and, um, and actually some still operational mines as well. You can actually still buy a gold pan in Quinell if you're interested. Um, there's still some Placier's gold, which is sort of free floating gold to be found in the rivers through there. Uh, the third day, the final day, swings way out north and, uh, and down into Jasper. Again, very remote, lots of trestle bridges, um, some beautiful alpine rivers. You know, when I talk about that blue color of the alpine rivers, that's really what we're seeing here in, in this image is that uh, really blue, um, milky kind of alkaline color. So finally, I do want to mention Coastal Passage as well. And Coastal Passage is the train route that connects Seattle to the Canadian Rockies. So this, um, so this would hook on to either the beginning or the end of a three or 
four-day journey traveling into Jasper, Lake Louise, or Banff. Uh, really beautiful. It's just a five-hour journey. If we're traveling from Vancouver to Seattle, it's kind of a breakfast train. And if we're going from Seattle into Vancouver to start off the journey, then it's um, it's an evening train. So it'd be, you know, it's kind of like a dinner on board. Uh, great services, awesome commentary, really fantastic stories about the relationship between Canada and the United States. Uh, we have smooth sailing experience through the border there. So we do have uh, pre-clearance through the border crossing. So really seamless and um, really beautiful coastal scenery as, as the name implies. So now that we've looked at the where, I, I kind of want to look at the how. We're going to talk uh, a little bit into our service levels. Uh, we do have three levels of service to choose from. We'll start with our entry level service, which is called Silverleaf. Silverleaf is a single level car with large extended picture windows for viewing. So this is uh, the top image really looking at Silverleaf from the outside of the car and you can see what I mean, it's single level. Um, you can also see at the end there where the cars are connected, there are little open windows where the stairs are. So guests can kind of stand in that open window area and get sort of the fresh mountain air in their visage. Um, it's definitely a, a nice refreshing place to stand if, for those who want to brave that mountain air particularly in April and October when it starts to get a little nippier. Uh, and inside the car, the bottom image there, you can see how guests can stand, really take in that scenery. So, uh, you know, the interior is very muted and, and really um, excellent at bringing the outside in. So you can stand up, it's very lighted, very bright inside, get great pictures through those windows. And we do find that people are, are often uh, moving, moving throughout the day, sort of standing up. Uh, so the food service, meal services in Silverleaf are prepared in the galley on board. So we do have a culinary team member, you can see him there, it's Jeff, um, who's preparing food in the galley. And, and then we roll a, a cart down the aisle to sort of pour, you know, a glass of wine or, or beer that's included with lunch. And, um, and we plate the meal right there in front of our guests to their preference. So maybe they want a little bit more fruit with their breakfast, or maybe they want a little bit more potatoes, or a little bit more starch with their lunch. Um, so we can definitely plate that to their preference as we put the meal down in front of them. So it is a seat side meal service plated uh, to their preference. I should mention it's also, you know, it's linen and cutlery as well. So, you know, no plastic forks or anything like that. And it's actually quite an elegant uh, experience as well. So really tasty food prepared by our, you know, favorite culinary team members. Silverleaf is partnered with moderate accommodations. So mostly we see sort of, you know, I'll use the terminology three-star hotels. Uh, we have some great examples here. So up in the top there, we see the Georgian Court in Vancouver, a little boutique property there in downtown Vancouver. Um, so uh, actually the corner photo there with the pool, that's the Delta Whistler Village Suites in, in Whistler. So all of these hotels are clean, comfortable, centrally located, just sort of basic in, in their amenities. So next up we have our gold leaf service, really um, our flagship level of service. Uh, again, this is the outside of the car on the top level of the slide here. So you can see how um, we're in a bi-level dome car. So guests are seated on the upper area um, under a ceiling that is fully wrapped in glass. So 180 degrees of, of panoramic views happening in the, in the upper level there. We also have access in, uh, in Gold Leaf to a lower level dining room. So I'll talk about that in the next slide when we look at uh, dining. But I do wanna point out in this, in this image here, you can see the gentleman standing out on the platform. That's actually one of our onboard hosts getting a, getting a breath of fresh air there on the, on the platform. So these are kind of deck areas or outdoor open air areas where guests can stand outside. Uh, get great pictures out there. There's always like one or two people that are kind of out there for the full two days. Uh, uh, really, you know, you get the clattering of the railway and the wind and um, it can be pretty exciting out there. Um, we also have, you know, full beverage services. So all beer, wine and spirits are included throughout the day, continuous service in, in Gold Leaf. Um, and we have some snack services happening upstairs as well. In the lower level, we have our dining experience. So, you know, this is where guests are choosing from a menu. It's sort of a restaurant style service. And through the swinging doors to the back of the galley, uh, to the back of the dining room, I should say, we have a galley where we have a fully staffed kitchen um, where our culinary team are preparing meals fresh on board the train made to order. 
So one of the things I do want to stress here about gold leaf and silver leaf is uh, if, if we have any dietary or mobility concerns, we're happy to accommodate those. We just need to know about them well in advance. As you can imagine, space on board the train is limited, so we don't have a ton of, uh, of storage space and, and we need to be well prepared um, you know, for any kind of uh, special meal services that we might need to deliver. So partnered with Gold Leaf Service are really, I'm going to use the term four star accommodations. So we see, um, you know, a lot of Fairmont properties. That's the Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge, the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise. We also might see the Four Seasons in, in either Vancouver or Whistler. Um, and we also work with the Sutton Place in, in Vancouver, uh, the Rimrock Resort in, in Banff. So, you know, really those special luxury hotels. In, in Gold Leaf Service, we're offering um, sort of a, a standard room at those properties. So partnering our gold leaf service with sort of those signature rooms at those four and five star hotels that I mentioned. We do have one more level of service and that's Gold Leaf Deluxe. So Gold Leaf Deluxe is really offering a bit of an upgrade at the hotel. So it's the same train service that I described and upgrading at the hotels to a room that's maybe a little bit larger, um, maybe featuring a more prominent view, just kind of depending on, on which property we're talking about. For 2018, we're also offering with Gold Leaf Deluxe a private transfer by town car from the airport on arrival. So now that we know uh, the where and the how, the other piece here is, you know, when. When do your guests want to travel? When do our clients want to travel on the train? So we operate in three beautiful seasons, the first of which is spring. So these are really the April and May departures. Uh, it's a very unique time to go. We still see sort of the vestiges of winter lingering over the landscape, uh, snow dusted peaks. We might even see some snow on the ground, particularly in the destinations where the elevation is higher, like Lake Louise. Uh, um, last time I was in Lake Louise in April, it, it really kind of looked like a snow globe. So it was pretty exciting to be there at that time. Um, it's also a great time to see wildlife. So the flora and the fauna are just starting to emerge. And, um, and this is really a great time for uh, bear viewing in particular. And those guys are everybody's favorite resident of the Rockies. There's, there's no better way to ramp up a train trip than to have a bear kind of stagger out from some bushes. So um, April is really the best time to see them. They're sort of just emerging from hibernation. They look a little bit skinny at that time because they're, they're starting their migratory pattern. They're kickstarting their digestive systems by munching on um, some of that growth that you see at the train, at the train tracks. And um, we do see a lot of them at that time. Also high water levels too, really exciting kind of rushing water levels as the thaw is, is getting going. Summertime is a great time to go. This is when the uh, days are longest. So we have long warm days, typically when most people are available to travel as well as in the summertime. Um, and we also see, you know, high kind of temperatures at that time. So it's nice and comfortable, especially for anybody from a, a warmer climate. You know, they might find that the summer temperatures are, are sort of the, the most comfortable for them. Also, all of the, you know, greenery is out. The mountainsides are covered in, in lush growth. And uh, we see the, the flowers out, the, you know, the, the flora to the fauna, as I mentioned. <laughs> And then lastly, we have this autumnal season as well. These are really the September and October dates. Um, I was just on the train for October and the weather was fantastic, really beautiful. Uh, it can be a little colder in the evening hours and also the days are a little shorter, which means you get really nice sunsets and sunrises. You can also see a, a sort of like a, a smattering of changing leaves. Mostly this area is evergreen, which means, you know, the trees are coniferous and they don't change color. But there are some trembling aspen, some birch trees that do move from, from yellow uh, to red through the fall season. And, and they do punctuate this landscape in a really unique way. So really a beautiful time to, to travel. So uh, a little bit about uh, what's new for 2018. I am conscious of the time here, so I, I do want to, uh, I'm going to kind of try and pick up the pace. I'm, I'm sort of uh, relaxing into my talking about Rocky Mountaineer, which I could do forever. So I'm going to try and uh, move a little quicker here. But um, what's new for 2018? So we do have two really great new tours that I want to discuss. There are some other uh, new pieces, but really want to bring to light these two new tours. 
And the reason I, I want to stress them is because they're sort of following a new trend in travel, which, as you all know, is uh, not just seeing but doing. So we wanted to bring a little bit more soft adventure into some of our itineraries, and, and these two itineraries really do touch on that. So the first one is the First Passage to the West Culinary Exploration. So this, this itinerary offers an, an opportunity to um, sort of explore through the the through a gastro experience. So in Vancouver, we'd start off in Vancouver with um, two nights of accommodation and uh, guests would get to select from one of two culinary tours, either uh, what's called a made in BC tour, which, which travels around Granville Island, about two and a half hours of walking around Granville Island and, and talking to the local producers and, uh, and trying some of those wares out. And then the other one is a, a walk around Chinatown, walk spelled W-O-K. So Chinatown in Vancouver, very established region, offering some unique um, culinary experiences, very authentic Chinese Canadian food as well. Um, and that would again be with a, with a chef, a local chef. Uh, the groups are limited to about six people per group for these tours. So very intimate experience with, uh, with a really nice connection to the culinary guide. So from there, um, the fine dining enthusiasts are going to really love the stops in Banff and, and Lake Louise. So we, we work with both the Eden Restaurant at the Rimrock Hotel in Banff and the Post Hotel Dining Room in Lake Louise. So very upscale dining rooms. And, um, and through these two destinations, guests are going to get to experience an exclusive six-course wine-paired tasting menu from the world-class chefs in both these destinations. So six courses, wine with each course, and, um, and so, yeah, very, very, very excellent. Actually, I should mention that the, the dining room in, at the Post Hotel has something like 25,000 bottles of wine surrounding it. So a uh, really unique kind of experience there and some excellent dining out in, um, in those high-end hotels in the Rockies. So they'll have um, two nights in, in Lake Louise where they'll do an ice field glacier tour, ice field and glacier tour, tour and then they'll have that six course meal at, uh, at the, in the award winning wine cellar at the Post Hotel in, and that's in Lake Louise. And then we also have two nights in Banff so that gives them one free day in Banff and then that chef's tasting menu at, at Eden um, at the Rimrock. And then finally, they, they tour from Banff into Calgary and have one final night in, in Calgary. The next tour on the soft adventure list for 2018 is called Journey Through the Clouds Outdoor Adventures. And this is really for um, those outdoor enthusiasts who want to get out, get on the water, paddle, um, you know, and, and sort of get more involved in the landscape and, and more tactile with the landscape. So they might even uh, get an opportunity to burn off some of those delicious meals they ate on the train here. So this one is uh, really in Vancouver. They have two options. So we've got two nights in Vancouver and they get to choose between either a guided cycling tour of the city that covers, I think, uh, 26 kilometers. So it's quite a significant bike ride um, or uh, an exploration of how sound on a Zodiac boat. So that's kind of the high speed boat that bounces over the waves there in, um, in Vancouver around Howe Sound. In Lake Louise, uh, they get to choose between either a sort of paddling Voyager canoe across Lake Louise. So that was kind of pictured in this image here. That's Lake Louise and the Victoria Glacier. So you can choose that. Or, um, oh, what was the other option? Nope, actually, that's it. It's just the one. It's the, the Voyager canoe across Lake Louise. And then in Jasper, they get their feet moving with a guided nature hike of, of Jasper National Park. In Banff, um, guests can choose to experience a, a sort of refreshing and relaxing rafting tour down Bow River, and then we have their, their tour and final night in, in Calgary. So something a little bit different, something that has uh, more adventure, more doing, um, as well as seeing. So I do want to make a call out here to some of our tools and resources that are available. Uh, the first is, is really the travel trade portal. So this is at RockyMountaineer.com. So www.RockyMountaineer.com. And in the top uh, right hand corner, you see an, an area to log in. So you can click on that and, and develop kind of a, a login for yourselves there. So you can have access to some of the tools that are available there. 
And I do want to mention that one of the tools we have available historically is our online agent training program. So this is often referred to as TRAX. Um, this is our travel agent online training program. So TRAX is currently undergoing a bit of a renovation um, and it has been uh, closed for construction, I'll say, uh, during that time. So we're expecting you know, to have something coming up in the next few months. So it's it's closed during the the winter season so that we can we can renovate it and put something up that really is aligned with our brand, um, that's new and engaging and features new content. So that's coming soon. Um, definitely sign up for our newsletter as well. So we have a B2B newsletter um, available on our website and signing up for that will certainly ensure that you're up to date with the announcements. I also want to mention that we do have some uh, travel agent uh, discounted rates as well. So if you're interested in traveling on Rocky Mountaineer and experiencing it for yourself, it's a very powerful tool to being able to kind of understand, you know, what we're all about here. So we, we would definitely encourage you to, to travel with us. And we have discounts of up to 50% off of the, the rail by itself or 20% off of our our vacation packages. So, you know, any of the soft adventure tours that I mentioned, um, you know, give us a call and, and price that out for yourself and, and one other person as well. And if you do have any other questions about, uh, you know, possibly booking for some clients or just want to learn more about uh, who we are and what we do, uh, feel free to reach out to us. There, We have a, a toll-free number here and we have a team of about 50 vacation consultants standing by ready to take those calls. So these, uh, these guys are our local experts. They've traveled on the train. Um, they're well trained up. I should know. <laughs> I played a part of that. And, um, and they're really looking forward to talking with you as well about what they can do. So we do have a little a little competition here. So um, so the competition is a question, and you'll email the answer to this question to a Mitchell at RockyMountaineer.com. She's my colleague in marketing. So the question is, what is one of the two soft adventure tours being offered by Rocky Mountaineer in the 2018 season? So Amy has a, a bit of a prize offering for you there if you can if you can get that. So I'll leave that up for just a second here. So it's A Mitchell, A-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L -L at RockyMountaineer.com. What is one of the two soft adventure tours being offered by Rocky Mountaineer in the 2018 season? So when you've got the answer, just go ahead and email that off to Amy and uh, she'll have a prize winner. So lastly, I want to give you an opportunity to ask some questions. So I think what I'll do is I'll hand it back to Dan at this stage, who's going to kind of walk us through um, some of the questions that you've been submitting. Thank you very much, Heather. Now, before we start the q and A, I'd, I'd just like to give a big thank you to all the travel agents who tuned in today. We hope you're enjoying the webinar. And if you happen to sign in a few minutes late, a recording of this webinar will soon be available on the Baxter Travel Media YouTube channel. So that's the Baxter Travel Media YouTube channel. Okay, so I'll bring up the submitted questions here. Okay, so the first question is, uh, this was asked uh, during the sweet and savory slide near the beginning. So this, this one was, was submitted pretty early on, but um, she asked, uh, Included in the price is the full board and hotel and train and airport transfer. Yeah, so uh, so our packages we we have um, we have several options, right? So we can book just the rail on its own, which would include the one night in the middle destination, like either Kamloops or Quesnel or Whistler, depending on which rail route we're looking at. So we can book just the train and then have um, you know our travel agent partners arrange hotels and tours on either side of the train. So that's an option. But in addition to that, we offer a catalog of about 65 different vacation packages. So we work with Holland America to book cruises. We work with Sonora Resort for kind of a special resort experience on the beginning end. We can book accommodations in Victoria even, Vancouver. So we book hotels and tour arrangements really in all of our destinations to offer a catalog of 65 different vacation packages. Packages. We also book meal plans. So on the train, all of our meals and beverage services are all included, but off the train, we can add those on as well. So we do book kind of meal plan experiences to complement those two. So 
to, to and sort of to answer the question in short, yes, we can do it all. So so just ask us and, and we'd be happy to to explore, you know, the needs of your clients and and what we can do to to make that fit just right. Excellent. Thanks, Heather. And the next question uh, asked by an anonymous viewer was, what are the travel agent rates and how to apply? Are they for certain dates and certain routes only? Uh, so the travel agent rates apply to all of our products with the exception of cruises. So all of our products with the exception of cruises, um, you can get a travel agent discounted rate. The discount is going to be from 20% to 50% off for yourself and one other traveler. Um, and, and really that's kind of dependent on what you choose. So if you're looking at a vacation package that has accommodations, tours, meals included off the train, then those are discounted at 20% and you can book them anytime. So you get 20% off those bookable anytime. For the rail by itself, uh, if you're booking it inside of 60 days prior to departure, again, all routes are applicable. The, the discount would be 50%. And if you're booking it outside of, I think it's either 60 or 45 days. I can't quite remember which one. Um, but if you're booking it kind of within that time frame, it's 50% it's off. And then outside of that time frame would be a lesser discount of 20% off. So if you want to kind of book it well in advance, it's kind of a lesser discount. But there are some what we call soft dates or dates where we know we're going to have, you know, availability. And, and those dates are bookable anytime at 50% at off, at the full 50% off. So just give us a call um, and one of our vacation consultants can, can definitely answer that for you. Amazing. Thanks, Heather. And Sharon asks, um, this was asked uh, just after that other question. Um, hi, uh, were the plate and the plate and food? Sorry, where they place the food in front of you that is brought on a cart? Is there a fold-out tray at your seat, like on an airplane? Yes, absolutely. So we're we're careful uh, not to use the A word, <laughs> the, air, the airline word, uh, just because our services really don't. Um, I would say compare to an airline, you know, it's quite, quite different, but yes, there is a drop down tray, which is kind of extendable. So, you know, you can have it either kind of far away from you or close to you. So a nice extendable, uh, large tray, lots of leg room. Um, and, and the, the meals are put down on top of a linen. So the server will place a linen on the tray, uh, cutlery, which is silverware wrapped in linen on the tray. And then the meal goes down onto the linen and it's actually multiple courses as well. So it has a sort of a first course and then a second course and a dessert, a third course. Okay, and Sharon also asks, is it possible to have non-alcoholic beer on board? I have a client that does not drink alcohol. Uh, that's a, an excellent question. I, I don't believe that it is. Uh, we do offer a host of non-alcoholic beverages. So we have, um, you know, all kinds of pop and coffee and tea and, um, but, but the sort of like, you know, beer and wine are all alcoholized. So we don't have de-alcoholized uh, beer and wine on board the train. Okay, that's good to know. And Zenny asks, what are your rates for solo passengers? And for U.S. clients, can your rates be in U.S. dollars? So certainly for our U.S. demographic, for our U.S. market, all of our rates are in U.S. dollars. In terms of specific pricing, I wouldn't really be able to, to give that here in this setting. Um, I would encourage you to call our vacation consultants and, and talk to somebody about, uh, about what the pricing looks like. The reason for that, I, I hate to skirt the issue, and it's, it's not that I'm, I'm trying to veil uh, the pricing. They're actually all available on the website. But the reason for that is uh, it's just so variable depending on what package we're talking about, the length of the package, what hotels are included. Um, so, you know, pricing really does range from, you know, 2000 to $15,000 per person, depending on what we're looking at. So I just really wouldn't be able to give a number that would be helpful. Um, so give us a call and, and we can look more specifically at, at what might fit, fit that client's needs and, and talk about solo pricing in that case. Great, thank you. And Nazi asks, uh, what percentage is agent's commission? 
So that again uh, ranges. So it depends. Um, it uh, depends on, on what agency, where you're at and, and who you're with. And uh, it ranges between 10 and 15%. And that, that would be, you know, inclusive of the cruise, inclusive of our insurance. So it's right off of, of everything, 10 to 15%. Great, great. And, um, and Sharon uh, asks, who would I get in touch with to find out if we can have the non-alcoholic beer placed on board? When you're paying a large sum, I would think something could be done about that. Yeah, I mean, so the, absolutely, yeah. So I would say, you know, when you go to make that reservation, um, give us a call and ask the vacation consultant if that's possible, we can look into it. Um, we, we certainly would welcome a guest to bring anything that they would like to have that might be over and above um, themselves and we can store it in a refrigerate, refrigeration in either the crew car um, or one of the generator cars. One of the challenges is really with, space and um and you know if, if we if we confirm a request like that then you know we really are needing to fulfill it in the same level of service that we do everything else so we'd have to check with our our onboard operations team to ensure that that's possible i um i wouldn't want to make any promises for them at this time but you know definitely we can we can investigate that for certain and then ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, if it's not possible for our onboard operations to fulfill, the guest is welcome to, to bring um, non-alcoholic beverages with them, and we can have that stored and served on the train when they get there. That's great. And Sharon says thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we'll just allow another um, uh, 30 seconds to a minute to see if uh, questions occur to anybody else that's, um, that's still tuned into the webinar. And once again, if you happen to sign in late, the recording of this webinar will be available on the Baxter Travel Media YouTube channel by tomorrow afternoon. Ah, Marnie says, it's a fabulous trip. I recommend it to everyone to go. Gold Leaf was the best. Couldn't agree more. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So glad you got an opportunity to travel with us. Thanks, Marnie. Okay, so I do believe that's it for the questions. So I'd once again like to thank everyone that attended the webinar today. And Heather, thanks so much for your fantastic presentation. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Dan. It was really great to get the opportunity to, to speak with the group and um, you know, give us a call if, if there's anything else that we can answer for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, I hope you all have a great day. And Heather, you take care. You too. Thanks, Dan.